Hello, my name is Nathan Crafts, and I'm here today to tell you about a book called How Robots Work by Jenny Moss. This book tells the story about different types of robots and how they are made and used every day. I think robots are cool, and I'm not the only one. Even the famous artist Leonardo da Vinci drew plans to build robot knights back in the 1400s. In the 1950s, the first modern industrial robot was built and many of these robots were used in car factories. Today, robots are used for lots of things like doing chores, designing bombs, spying on people, and packaging food. I am here at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, Georgia to visit the humanoid robots laboratory at the School of Interactive Computing. I am meeting with Dr. Michael Stillman, Professor of Robotics and Intelligent Machines at Georgia Tech. Dr. Stillman, thank you for meeting with me today to talk about robots and how they work. I recently read a book about robots. I read that there are many different types of robots like mobile robots and autonomous robots. Thank you very much for having me out here, Nathan. What types of robots do you build and work with at the Georgia Tech Robotics Lab? So there are many uh, labs in Georgia Tech Robotics. So we have everything actually here from uh, mobile robots to flying robots um, to kind of humanoid robots, which is what I work on. Um, so some of the robots you can see here are humanoid robots that look very much like a human being. Um, and this one is made by uh, AIST, uh, or KAIST actually, uh, in Korea. And so it's a full human-like robot that's designed for search and rescue. And there's another one that we actually built here at Georgia Tech um, that's also a humanoid, but he's actually on wheels. So he's kind of like a Segway. So he's kind of a mobile robot and a humanoid at the same time. Who designs the robots and how are they designed? So many people are involved in designing a robot, especially these new robots. Um, the one you see back there, that was designed by KAIST, um, which is a Korean uh, Advanced Institute for Science and Technology. And it was a, uh, a professor, Dr. O, uh, actually created the design himself uh, many years ago. And he updated that design to this uh, new robot with more power and things like that. Um, the, this robot here, actually, we designed ourselves. Um, I, I taught this class, um, actually, at Georgia Tech called Building Humanoid Robots. And uh, the students in the class uh, learned about the different principles of designing robots. And uh, they basically came together, together with our engineer, uh, Dan Walker. And uh, we built everything from scratch, pretty much. Dr. Stillman, do you design robots to help people? And if so, what types of jobs can these robots do? So absolutely, the goal of um, probably most robotics research these days is to help people. And there's different arenas uh, of help. And the main one we focus on is search and rescue. So um, for example, in the DARPA challenge, our goal is to go into these dangerous situations and have the robot be able to extract a victim or something like that by going over rough terrain, opening doors, um, being able to remove rubble and things like that, right? Last summer, I studied programming and robotics at Georgia Tech. When I programmed my robot line to walk and roar, I used Pico Cricket and Scrap software. What type of software do you use to program your robots? So there's many components uh, to the software that we use to program our robots. Because uh, the, these robots, the kind of robots you use are uh, probably smaller robots. So you, you had to use um, kind of, you have limited amount of the computational power. Um, for us, um, the kind of uh, robots that we have are bigger, so we can actually use complete computers, kind of like your Pentium, whatever, computers, right? I read that actuators are the devices that give robots movement, movement like the muscles in our body, bodies. How are the actuators and robots made? So there's very different kinds of actuators, right, in robots. Most of the actuators that we use are um, DC motors. So basically the kind of motors you find in your fan or just about anything, right? And those are pretty easy to use. They're easy to control because you just 
basically connect wires to them and then they turn, right? Um, because there's a lot of power that's required, what we use is a lot of gearing on these motors and what's called the harmonic drive gear. And that gives you about a 500 to one reduction ratio that makes the robot, the motor spins really fast, right? But the actual actuator as a whole turns slowly with a lot of power. I know that an end effector is a tool that is attached to the end of a robotic arm, like a clock or a torch. What are some other features of robots? So end effectors are actually very important, and a lot of people think about how to design the end effectors of robots. So on that robot back there, you can actually see this complicated, uh, basically gripper hand, right? Um, and it actually turns so that you can use the other end of that um, to actually walk as a full bot quadruped robot on the ground. Uh, the hands on that robot are a different kind, um, and they actually only have, uh, I think, three actuators, but because of the way that they're designed through these linkages, right? So that what happens is that they actually can close and they can pinch and do different things depending on how these actuators are used, right? So you were asking also about the different parts of a robot. So some of the other things are usually on a humanoid, for example, is of course the robot arms. And the arms consist of many different modules. And this is very easy to see actually on Krang. So this was a module which contains a motor, a controller board, and it also has the harmonic drive gear ratio on it, right? What's interesting actually is this arrangement of actuators is actually kind of cool because it's what's called a spherical wrist. So kind of like you have a wrist, right? It allows you to kind of turn, right, in all directions. But a robot usually just has single degree of freedom actuator, so it can only bend in one direction. But if you take three of them and align them in such a way that the axes intersect, then you can pretend like this is a wrist, right? So we have that arrangement right here, and we have that arrangement right here. So you get your shoulder, you get your elbow, and these three are the wrist. Sensors are a very important part. And so some obvious sensors are things like the connect you see on there, okay? This robot actually has a stereo camera head, which you can see over there. So with multiple cameras, a laser scanner to get depth information about the world. Um, and there's actually also internal sensors inside each joint that tell you what the positions of those joints are. In the book, there was a robot that could play chess. Does Georgia Tech have a robot that can play chess for other games? Yes, so it's actually, uh, we do have a robot that can play chess. And uh, this was a major research project that we did at one point, uh, maybe three years ago. We participated in this competition for, uh, for chess playing robots. And I think we got second place in that. Intel beat us. But uh, it, was, it was a robot that could actually move the chess pieces and then uh, the hard part for us was to actually get the robot to accurately grasp the pieces and move them. Dr. Stillman, thank you for speaking with me today. It has been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much, Nathan. It's been a great.